In this video, we're going to be naming and classifying angles. So we're going to start with our smallest, smallest type of angle, our acute angle, which is going to be less than 90 degrees. So if we look at our half circle protractor, and we bring our side, one of our sides, up to straight 90, this is a 90 degree angle. Okay, so acute is going to be anything less than that. So if we go down to 89, that would be an acute angle. If we go down to 10, that would be an acute angle. So anything between here and all the way here is going to be acute, less than 90 degrees. Now a right angle, like we just talked about, has to be exactly 90. So there's no less than or more than, it has to be exactly 90 degrees. As we're going through the different types of angles, fifth graders, it would be a good idea to write in your notes the definitions for each one. So for acute angle, you would say less than 90. For a right angle, we would say exactly 90. Okay, next would be the obtuse angle. And that tells us it's going to be more than 90. So if we go straight up to our right angle here, it's going to be anything past that all the way down to an almost straight angle. So right here, 130 degrees would be an obtuse angle. 93 degrees would be an obtuse angle. If we go all the way down, almost so it looks like a straight line, but let's stop at like 177 maybe? That's going to be an obtuse angle. So anything, again, between the 90 and the 180 are going to be obtuse angles. So bringing that side anywhere in, the, in this range. Now a straight angle would be a straight line. So we want exactly 180 degrees. You know you have a straight line if it has exactly 180 degrees. And when you make a little half circle, it should be look exactly like a half circle because 180 degrees is half of a circle. Our next type of angle is a reflex angle. Now this type of angle we need a full circle protractor to make and it's going to be an angle more than 180. So as I'm bringing my side of this angle all the way around, right now we're looking at acute, this is all acute. When we get straight up to 90, we're at right. These are all obtuse angles. And when we get to 180, we're at a straight line. So now anything more than 180 is going to be a reflex angle. So if I come here and spit that angle out, this is a reflex angle. And let's keep going. Let's do one about here. And let's come all the way this way, really close to that zero again. Here's another obtuse, or uh, sorry, another reflex angle. So all of these are reflex angles. You can see that their totals are more than 180. And the other thing about a reflex angle is that we're no longer measuring the inside of an angle. So we're not measuring this part. Instead, we're measuring the outside. And we use a little circle like this to tell us that we're measuring the back or the outside of the angle. So we're no longer looking in the inside, we're looking at that outside part. So whenever someone asks you to measure the reflex of an angle, you're going to know you're measuring the reflex if you see these circles on the outside of the angle. So lastly is a circle, which isn't an angle, it's more of a shape, and a circle has to have exactly 360 degrees. If we move that under circle, we can see that we've made a perfect circle with 360 degrees. Here's homework question one. Which angles have more than 90 degrees? Check all that apply. Here's a nice little chart. It might be something nice you could put in your notes, copy down in your notes, or just listen along as we go through. But this is a nice way to show you least to greatest, the smallest angles all the way up to the biggest angle. So we have acute which is less than 90. We have our acute little angle. And we also have a little way to remember it. You can remember that acute is the smallest angle by thinking, oh, it's a cute little angle. Next, we have a right angle, which has to be exactly 90 degrees. We know it's right because it has this little square 
telling us it's a right angle. And a way to remember that is it's an upright angle. Obtuse is our more than 90. And think about obtuse, how long that name is. Obtuse. It's a long name, so it's a bigger angle than an acute. Straight is exactly 180, about half of a pi. Reflex, we know, is when we're measuring the outside of the angle. And reflex actually means bent back. So you can think about the back of an angle. And lastly, our circle, which is exactly 360 degrees, a whole pi. Homework question two. What type of angle is this? Homework question three. Fill in the blank. So go ahead and read through each of these statements and write your answers in order. One, two, three, and four. And then when you get to the Google form, you're going to find the answer that has your answers in order. The next part of this lesson is naming angles. We always want to make sure that we're naming angles correctly so people know which angles we are talking about. So I'm going to get a highlighter handy here. And we have some hints. It says the vertex is always going to be in the middle. And a vertex, if you don't know, is the part where the two sides of an angle meet. So I have side one and side two. And those sides meet at what's called the vertex. So this is the vertex here. And this is the vertex here. So when we're naming angles, we always want to go out, in, out. So I'm going to start out. I'm going to go in and then I'm going to go out again. So this angle, when we start out, we're going to be starting at A, we're going to go to B, the vertex, and we're going to go back out again to C. So if I were going to name this angle, I would name it A, B, C. And what we do when we name angles is we put a little angle sign in front of it. So this means angle A, B, C. We can also go the opposite way. So I can start out at the C, go in to the B and back out to the A. So I could also say that this was angle C, B, A. So if we look at that, we have angle A, B, C going this way, or we have angle C, B, A going that way. So let's take a peek at this over here. We have two different angles over here. We have this angle here, and then we have this angle here. So looking at the black angle, we want to think about going out, in, out. So I'm going to start at my P, and I'm going to go out, in, out, just looking at that angle. So going out, in, out, this angle could be called two different things. It could be called angle P, Q, R, or we could also go out, in, out this way, and we could call it R, Q, P. Great, so now looking at our bottom angle, if we go down to that bottom one, we're looking to go out, in, out, or we can go back the other way, out, in, out. So this one again can be named a couple different things. We can name this angle R, Q, S, or S, Q, R. R, ooh, that's a bad R. Let's try that again. R, Q, S, or we can name it angle S, Q, R. So the other hint that's up here, which is nice, is it tells us that the vertex is always in the middle. So when we're naming angles, we see that the B is always in the middle, and that is our vertex here. When we're looking over here, we see Q is always in the middle. And if we look at the vertex of these angles here, Q is the vertex. So that's how you know if you're naming angles correctly, if the vertex, the point where the two sides meet, is sitting in the middle of your angle. So here's homework question four. It says, what is the correct name for this angle over here? And you're gonna check all that apply. So remember, there's a couple different ways you can name an angle. So make sure that you're finding all the different ways you can name this angle. Homework question five. What is the correct name for angle one? 
So we're just looking at this angle here labeled 1. Nice job on completing today's homework. We will see you tomorrow.